So, and welcome to Parsing John. Today we are in chapter 1, verse 43. This is a new paragraph for the chapter, the very last paragraph. It goes all the way through verse 51, and once we reach there, we're done. And then the plan is currently to move on to just chapter 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rubric, everything that we want to be looking for as we go through this text. And let's read the Latin. In Crestinum voluit exire in Galileam, et in venit Philippum, et dicit a Jesus sequereme. And that's as far as we're going to go today. The very first thing that we want to find is our verb, and that's what we have right here with woluit. This comes from wolo, wele, wolui, a irregular verb, normally something that's not taught until near the very end of Latin, but right before you get into reading the what are they called? Unaltered texts. So we've got IT here, and this is built off of our third principal part, which is the perfect tense. So third person, singular, perfect. And it is, of course, active and indicative. It means he wishes, or sorry, wished or wanted. And this is going to take a direct, and not a direct object. Of course, it will take a direct object. It's going to take an infinitive as its object, which we find here in exire. This is exeo, exire, exiwi, exitum. This is another highly irregular verb, normally not learned until around the same time as this one. I think actually, usually after. This is the present active infinitive to go out. And now that we've finished all this, we can go back to the beginning of the sentence and figure out what's going on with this prepositional phrase, which starts with in. We've got the U-M right there from crastinum. We know that this is taking the accusative as its object. And normally, I would assume that this is showing us accusative of place to which. However, the meaning of crastinum, which comes from our adverb cross, meaning tomorrow, so this is going to be a long A, I believe, that doesn't make sense. Accusative place towards which tomorrow is not really a place, it's a time. So if you go and you take a look deeper into the meaning of in, in say short, for instance, then you're going to find that it can also have a temporal meaning. And in this case, it's going to mean till tomorrow. And if this were not Latin, I'd add an article in there and state until the morrow, but oh well. We're stuck with what we have. This is, in fact, accusative, singular, and it's probably going to be neuter, though it could technically be masculine. We cannot tell, because this is an adjective, meaning of tomorrow, something with regard to tomorrow. Let's move on. We've got another N right here, so another prepositional phrase. Galayam, we have a M right there, so we know that N is taking accusative here as well. Ahead, Ed is not connecting it to a second part of the prepositional phrase, so we can stop right there. Galileum, since it ends in AM, is accusative singular, and it's probably going to be feminine, since most locations are and most first declension are. And this one is showing location into which. Et is and. And when it, we have IT here as our ending. This is going to be third person singular. This is unwenio and wenere and weni. So this could either be present or perfect tense. We can't tell. This is active and indicative. He found or finds Philippon. Um there tells us that this is accusative singular masculine, which makes sense since it's the direct object of our verb. Et means and. Dikit, we have it right there, which is, of course, another third person singular. Dico, dikere, dixi, so this is present tense. And it's active and indicative. Says, so since this one is present, this one is probably also going to be present, but until we compare it to the Greek, that's not going to be certain. A comes from is a id, our demonstrative. I'm running out of voice quickly. Sorry. Dative singular. And we can't really tell the gender since they 
all three genders share the same one, but it's going to be Philip, therefore masculine, to him. Jesus, U.S. here tells us this is nominative, singular, masculine, and he's our subject. So we enter direct discourse here, so we add quote marks. Sequere me. Let's start with me, because that's going to be a little bit easier. Me is, of course, from ego, mei, mihi, me, me. So this could either be accusative, singular, or ablative, singular. Context will tell us. That's the easy part. Sequere comes from sequor, sequi, secutus sum. So this is a deponent verb. And ere here looks like an infinitive. And frankly, if this were not a deponent, this would be the infinitive it, and it would have, since sequor is a third conjugation verb, so those normally end in short ere. -E. But since this is a deponent, we know it can't be that. So our only other option for this is that this is the second person singular present deponent or passive imperative. Our passive imperatives are ere and mihi. Is that anything visible? Yes, that is visible. Good. So, second singular present deponent. I'm running out of room. Imperative. Follow me. And one's going to follow what? I now, sorry, don't remember if Sequor takes a special case in its object. If it does, then I'll put a note on the screen. But I'm going to assume accusative is probably the one, because that's what it would normally be. We don't know without looking into verse 44 whether or not this part, this quotation ends, so I'm not going to add those quote marks until later. I probably won't remember until we're going through and comparing the two texts together. Oh well. Let's take a look at it in its greater context. Till tomorrow he wished, or wanted, to go out into Galilee. And he found where he finds Philip, and says to him, Jesus says to him, follow me. And that's as far as we're going to go today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I hope taking a look at verse, verse 43 has been helpful for you, and I hope that you continue to join me. Have a good day, and wale.